Hi there, I'm Giovanni. You've probably seen one of my videos doing an analysis on a popular public speech and showing what they could do better or what they did right. And I wanted to give you a peek behind the scenes of how these videos are made because I have the problem that they take a really long time to make. And I want to kind of publicize what it takes to make these videos in hopes that someone would be able to streamline my process or say, hey, you should do it this way. So every day I get an email in my inbox from Google alerting me about any new articles on the web that mention the word speech. And I'm very picky about the ones that I choose, so it, it tends to be about one or two a week maybe that I find that I can actually do a, a video analysis on. So once I have a good candidate for a video, I spend time to write a script for my video about that video. So I basically watch the speech several times and write down some of the top things that could be improved about it or top things that made it really good. Now usually on a different day, I will begin the filming process. So filming is the fun part. So this is my video setup. I have a video camera that I got from work. Well, it's, it's just a camera, but it can do video. And then I have a couple of lights with umbrellas to diffuse the light. I have the lectern where I keep what I'm gonna say so that between takes I can go here and read and I have this <laughs> it's a work light but it has a nice kind of blue tone to it so that's it's the same tone really as the other lights so it works well and then I have this background when I'm filming I use this lapel microphone and I connect this end to a smartphone and put it in my pocket and then I put this under my shirt and clip it onto my clothing. So basically, the idea is I need to capture sound from the lapel microphone because it's a lot closer to me than the camera microphone, and I can't connect it directly to the camera because the camera doesn't have that input. So I have to do those separately. Okay. Okay. and then sync them up later, which I'll just show you in a second. But basically what I do is I start recording on the phone, I start recording with the camera, I go in front of the camera, sit around for a second thinking about what I'm gonna say next, and then I just do a take. And if it doesn't go out well, I pause, smile, <laughs> and do another take. Pause, smile, do another take until it's perfect, pretty much. Now one of my pet peeves about this process is since it takes so long, I don't really have time to put much effort into the script of the video or into the editing of the video. So I can't do something that's like a super humorous video that's going to go viral or something because it's really fun to watch. I'm just really doing it for the audience that is hardcore into speech. I wish that I had enough time to really go into editing, making it into a more fun video and also doing more humorous elements. So when I'm done recording, I send the audio file to Google Drive from the app that I use to record the audio, and then I send the video files using just an SD card to my computer, and then I sync them up using a program called Plural Eyes, which is really handy. Otherwise, I could just do it manually by clapping at the beginning of the clip or something like that, but I, I prefer just to do it quickly. Um, then I export that as a unified file, so it's the video from the camera and the audio from the audio recording device and, and they're connected. And then I put those into Adobe Premiere and I use the waveform where I can see the audio spikes and I can see where I start talking and I just kind of go for and look for the, the best take and then quickly clip it so that I have these jump cuts between all of the best takes. I also color correct because I overexpose the image in order to make the white background perfectly white in the video and I don't want myself to look like an angel or something so I bring down the curve so that I appear darker against that background. Nice. So you may be thinking, okay Geo, that sounds kind of long but not that bad, you're done with the video, it takes a few hours, no big deal. Well, I'm not done with the video, I'm about halfway through. Um, I still have to upload the video to YouTube and edit the description, make a title, make all the tags and make that catchy. I have to make a thumbnail for the video in Photoshop and then I have to go through the automatically generated subtitles on YouTube and edit them. That takes a long time. And the subtitles are not optional because 60% of users on Facebook watch the video without sound. And so I use those subtitles, I download them, upload the video to Facebook, 
and upload those subtitles that I wrote on YouTube. And then I have to make a post on my blog with the video so that I get some of that search engine optimization traffic. Sometimes I reformat the subtitles into a transcript so that um, Google can actually crawl my page and see the content that I created. It can't crawl a video so it doesn't count for search engine traffic. And I also have to write an email in MailChimp and code it and then send it out to my audience and make a Facebook post on my personal page and, and other stuff like that. So if I'm being efficient, this whole process takes maybe five hours if I'm being really efficient, probably a lot more if you consider all the time I spend thinking about the project and all the time I spend doing subtitles and stuff like that that, that can be really arduous. Oh, boo-hoo! Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. And really, I don't get that much traffic or traction on these videos. Um, they get more traction, obviously, than a, a regular blog post, but not that many people are watching this. I'm, I'm a small guy, I don't have a big audience, and that's because I haven't had time to build one. But my question is, if you were in my position, would you lower the quality of your videos until you got a big, bigger audience and it was worth it? Would you keep going forward and saying, if you build it, they will come, and just keep building really high quality videos? Would you stop doing the videos altogether and just write articles or just do advertisements for my coaching? You know, what would you do if you're in my position? And do you have any suggestions for how I could improve this process? Let me know. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, you are officially a big supporter of mine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know it can be annoying to be advertised to, quote unquote. I think I provide value to people, especially people who are interested in speeches, but um, I don't I don't really like to sell myself to people, so thank you very much for watching this, and thank you very much if you provide some feedback for me.